My name is Jeff Dickerman. I'm with Optech Incorporated. Uh, we're based out of uh, Lowell, Michigan, which is outside of Grand Rapids um, in the Midwest. And uh, we are a manufacturing facility. We make, uh, primarily make actually uh, instruments for astronomy. Optech uh, started out as DOAA Enterprises. Uh, Jerry Persia was the founder. He was in college and was building drive correctors for, uh, um, you know, for uh, telescope mounts. He moved to Lowell in 1979 and founded uh, Optech Incorporated. Um, he, uh, Optech originally was a uh, uh, manufacturer of instrumentation. Uh, alongside that uh, drive corrector, we made a line of uh, single channel photometers, which we still make today. Jerry uh, kind of parlayed that into a line of instruments for the National Park Service called uh, visibility transmissometers and that worked into nephilometers and some other types of measurement instruments. And then in 1999, uh, he looked at the uh, focusers out there in the astronomy market, the amateur astronomy market, and realized that uh, there wasn't a good solid focuser on the market. So he designed the TCF, the temperature compensating focuser, that primarily is used to uh, correct the temperature drift of a typical Schmidt cast at that time, the Mead and the Celestrons. Um, that kind of developed into a number of other products. We've made filter wheels, we've made filter sliders. Um, we uh, uh, acquired uh, Alnatac Astro Systems some years ago, um, I guess in 2011 or so. Working with Jerry in 1988, I guess it was, I got out of the Marines. I was stationed out here in California. And I went back home and uh, started a family and um, decided to join uh, Optech as a kind of a sales and uh, manager. Uh, role and worked for him for many years and then in 19 or excuse me in 2008 my wife and I decided we're going to take the plunge we're going to become business owners and uh, so we bought the company from him and uh, been going strong ever since. Hi uh, I'm Jeff Dickerman from Optech Incorporated and today we're going to install a quick sync 40 uh, motor onto a feather touch 3545 focuser. We do everything in-house we do all our own machining. Uh, we have a uh, electronic board production facility. We make our own um, surface mount boards. We have a small shuttle oven that we hand load at this point, but uh, that'll be automated in the future as well. Uh, we have an optics lab, electronics lab, and um, do all the design work in-house. So we try to keep it close and local um, for our, our group in, uh, in Michigan. So this is the TCF Lynx. Uh, like all our other focusers, it's a temperature compensating focuser and has a temperature probe. The original TCF prototype from 1999 is still used every clear night in Grand Rapids. Um, we've had, a couple years ago, I had a customer uh, contact me and said he needed a new adapter for his TCF focuser. So uh, we sold him a new adapter. He said, you know, this is actually the third adapter I've had to buy because I've had three different telescopes. He goes, you know, I've, I've gone through a couple different cameras and two mounts and I think your TCF is the only thing I still have on my original rig. Um, so that's pretty typical for, uh, for the types of calls that we get from customers. The stuff that we build lasts and uh, we want it to last. Our basic approach with, uh, um, with all the instruments that we develop and uh, products that we design is that they should be remotely uh, controllable. So whether you're observing in your backyard or whether you're observing um, halfway around the world, um, the instrument, uh, the focuser, the rotator, the Alnatec flat panel, for instance, should be uh, available through a PC connection and uh, um, remotely controlled in a, in a robust and reliable way. Uh, the biggest uh, difficulty in automating an observatory is that things do break. So uh, we're pretty proud of the fact that most of our instruments uh, are pretty solid and um, don't, uh, don't fail. We uh, try to keep an eye out for um, what people need, and we listen to the customers quite a bit as well. Um, Gary Cole is one of our customers in Reno, Nevada, and he has given us so many product suggestions that have actually turned into successful products. Um, and um, there was a fellow named Ted Agos back east. He had a number of ideas, and so we've actually got a product named for him. He, uh, he said, well, you want to do it this way. So we did, and uh, made our own uh, changes and advances, of course, as well. But we have uh, good partnerships with, like, Starlight Instruments to make the feather touch focusers. Some folks have asked, well, why don't you make a manual focuser? Well, there's a great one out there already. We motorize it. We've helped, uh, we developed their uh, Focus Boss system. We call it our Focus Links. Um, we developed the clutch mo uh, motor mechanism. 
Um, so we worked with them. Uh, we worked with Alnatac until uh, they decided they needed to sell the company. So we bought the company uh, outright uh, for the flat panels, for the flat fielders. Um, we work with uh, AG Optical, for instance. Um, we build a lot of his, we machine a lot of his uh, uh, com telescope components. And we work with Plane Wave and Celestron and Mead as well. One of the biggest challenges we have uh, in, in astronomy is that we have a big heavy moment arm out in space. And we're moving that moment arm all over the world. We're pointing in every direction of the sky. And so you have this big cantilevered weight, if you will. Um, so the robustness has to be built in from the beginning. So I work with the team to make sure that the load is going to move no more than an absolute minimum. Some of the other uh, things that we've done is, uh, uh, like with the Perseus, for instance, uh, the challenge there was to be able to get a spectrograph and a imaging camera and perhaps a planetary camera all on one telescope. And it has to be done remotely because we're Optech and we do everything such that it's remote. The challenge there was to look at uh, how do you move the image rather than moving the instruments because we initially thought about a large instrument turret and uh, dismissed that because of that moment arm load problem. It's hanging out in space and now you're, now you're adding one more dimension to your uh, uh, physical constraints on the mount and the telescope itself. So uh, a rotating mirror was the answer and um, so the, uh, the Perseus was born and has gone through a couple of generations. Actually, we're just introducing generation three now, which has internet capability. And um, Dan Van Nord, our uh, software engineer, was excited to show me that he could control it from his uh, tablet yesterday, or the day before. So um, there's, a, a, there, there's a desire in, the, in, in, in our group, our uh, Optech design teams, to always stay on the cutting edge. And I feel like we've done that well, and we'll continue to do that in the future. The new uh, TCF Leo is our thin, thin focuser. It's about an inch and a quarter thick, so about the thickness of your eyepiece. And uh, um, rather than use belts, which is the way we normally will run a, uh, you know, a thin focuser like that, so you can run some lead screws, uh, we did it all in gears. So it's fully geared. You pull the cover off, it looks like a steampunk engine. And we actually have an acrylic uh, uh, back home we're cutting right now. We're going to try and see if we can get that so we can show it for our, just, for, just for the visibility of it. But it also has full uh, 21st century technology. It's, it's got the Focus Links controller that has full Wi-Fi capability, uh, Ethernet and serial, USB serial right out of the box. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, we, we, try to, uh, we try to come up with innovative designs for all the products that we make. And in fact, uh, my chief engineer, Lee uh, Dickerman, um, says that if he can't do it innovatively, if he can't do something new, he doesn't want to do what everybody else does. So it's got to be something new and unique. And there's got to be a new, new and unique way to go about it. And, and it's robust too. Uh, you can't show that in the video, but uh, you've hefted some of these things. Everything is heavy. So not excessively heavy, but heavy for a purpose. I think that lends itself to some of the old style, old look designs um, but uh, uh, like with the, uh, with the hand control that you just mentioned, you know, we've just added the uh, encoder, the rotary encoder to it. So now you've got a thumb wheel that you can rotate and just tap it for different uh, speeds for your focuser. And that works retroactively with all the old uh, um, Focus Boss and TCF links and all of our, all of our devices. CBS Television presents a special report on Sputnik 1, the Soviet space satellite. Douglas Edwards reporting. No, I was interested in astronomy as a little shaver. I, uh, I wanted to be an astronomer when I grew up, and, um, you know, the space race was big. One of my earliest memories, of course, is my dad getting me up to watch Apollo 11 um, astronauts. Uh, a lot of the young folks today don't have that. They haven't been alive when someone walked on the moon. Though I think uh, there are other interests that, there, there are other, I don't know what the right word is, star, like Star Wars, for instance, still uh, fires up that imagination. But, uh, you know, we were living through it. The space race was real. And uh, um, it, was a, it was a different time for us. And I don't think we had as many distractions. Today there's so many distractions that uh, uh, it's, it's, it's hard for uh, people to focus the way that I think some of the uh, early baby boomers did.
Impossible space is there. And we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there. And new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And therefore, as we set sail, we ask God's blessing on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventure on which man has ever embarked. Thank you. Perhaps it's a natural evolution uh, into the private sector. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's, I think that's a natural evolution that, um, uh, that the private sector will uh, ultimately take over space travel, um, space exploration. But I think that uh, the big difference was everybody in the 60s was involved and interested in the space race. The man on the street who may not have an interest in astronomy or space himself knew about it and he was vested. Um, today, we're leaving it to the Jeff Bezos and Elon Musks to stir our imagination. We need to stir it ourselves. It needs to come from the STEM systems, the school systems, the, um, the education industry needs to do a better job, and I think they are. I, it's not fair for me to say they need, need to do a better job, but I think that they need to really stir the imagination of the children, uh, the young people today, to go out and do something not to sit back and watch someone else. Hands on, that's what we need, more hands on. First memory I had, I had a Mead six inch that I bought, I was probably 15, 16 years old, a Newtonian, F8 Newtonian, and uh, trying to find the Ring Nebula. And I was out near Flint, Michigan, out in the middle of nowhere. No astronomy, friends, no, I was out, I was out in the wilderness. and. Uh, I searched for that thing for two weeks, <laughs> and I know I must have looked at it many times where I realized, oh, that's what it is. So, dabbled in a little bit of uh, astrophotography back in the film days, but when the CCDs came online, that's when uh, it really started, to, the interest really started to pop.